kaiju, the Japanese word for... A giant monster that destroys everything around it, like Godzilla, the king of the monsters. And Gamera, the guardian of the universe. Despite being box office rivals for half a century, these two enormous creatures have never met. Until today. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The year was 1954, less than a decade after Little Boy and Fat Man had decimated Japan. The nuclear age had begun. As the United States tested their shiny new hydrogen bombs across the Pacific, one of them woke something up. Godzilla, the radioactive rampaging savior slash destroyer of Japan. Mutated by nuclear energy, Godzilla stands over 300 feet tall and weighs 90,000 tons. He is an unstoppable force of nature. And for some reason, Godzilla has made Japan his personal playground and has been stomping through it for 60 years. Couldn't he have picked on some other country? <laughs> Godzilla's radioactive mutation leaves everything in his wake contaminated. Water, plants, even people. Godzilla's presence alone turns a city block completely uninhabitable. Like that noisy upstairs neighbor, or people who let their dog shit in your front lawn. But Godzilla does not simply walk past his enemies to destroy them. His strength is insane! He once lifted and threw his arch-rival Kaiser Ghidorah, who weighs 100,000 frickin' tons. He channels this strength through his claws, teeth, tail, and epic gravity-defying drop kicks! Hilarious abilities aside, Godzilla would not be such a legendary kaiju without some serious firepower. He can emit atomic energy from his body for a short-range nuclear pulse. Or fire his signature atomic breath, a goddamn laser beam of pure radiation. That's like microwaving at least a hundred balls of tinfoil. Well, give or take a few million. The atomic breath can melt, burn, or blow up just about anything. And you know it just can't smell good. I mean, that's a lot of fish. No, 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 no. That right there is Zilla, the bastardized and shamed American version that Toho literally bought the rights to and completely rebranded just to murder on screen. <laughs> Take that, America. And that was just the real Godzilla's standard atomic breath. Yep, after absorbing a giant pterodactyl soul, Okay, he gained the power to boost his breath to the Red Spiral Ray. An attack so deadly, it only took a few blasts to obliterate the more powerful clone of himself, Space Godzilla. What? Space Godzilla? Yes, Space Godzilla's a thing. Moving on. Uh oh Godzilla's cell structure can quickly regenerate from all manner of wounds. And despite being vulnerable to man-made electricity, he possesses magnetic properties. Like a lightning rod, he can attract thunderbolts from the sky and use nature's power to enhance his own abilities. Or turn himself into a giant living magnet. Magnets? How do they even work? Well, believe it or not, that isn't the weirdest thing that Godzilla can do. If Big G needs to get somewhere quick, he bends over, charges up, and does this. Well, at least Japan is creative. Wait, can that even happen? Scaling to the present, to actually lift his body means the atomic breath must have a force of over 328 trillion PSI. That's the equivalent of one trillion riot control fire hoses, enough to wrap around the earth 38,000 times. Damn. Godzilla has 44 known victories, largely due to his insane durability. He's fallen into a volcano, survived a black hole, and tanked a meteorite point blank without a scratch. But despite popular belief, Godzilla is not invincible. His regeneration takes time, his speed is lacking, and despite having two brains, one in his skull and the other where his tail meets his torso, he's pretty darn clumsy. Where were you on that one, ass brain? He officially lost a fight against King Kong, and he's even died in four separate films. 
but Godzilla's victories definitely outweigh his failures. There's a good reason they call him the King of the Monsters. <laughs> The year was 1965, the apex of the space race. Technology was advancing further and faster than ever before, but no one could have anticipated the bioengineered marvel hidden beneath the waves. Eons ago, the ancient people of Atlantis learned how to construct life and foolishly decided to play God. But instead of creating something safe like a dog or a bunny, they created giant flying laser shooting murder birds. Surprise, surprise, they couldn't be controlled and they turned 100% of Atlantis into oceanfront property. So what was their solution to counter these giant destructive monsters? Why another giant destructive monster, of course. Enter Gamera, guardian of the universe and friend to all children. Oh, you're dumb. You are Gamera doesn't hurt people. He likes them. Friend to all children? That's a terrible title. How about Gamera, the flying, fire-breathing ninja turtle of doom? That's actually not far off. For a 260-foot, 10,000-ton turtle, Gamera is quite agile. And he sticks it! His arsenal includes two huge tusks, twin elbow spikes, and a fire breath so strong it can be used underwater, despite being, you know, fire. Technically, it's highly concentrated plasma, the fourth state of matter. The hottest plasma ever created by man exceeded 3.6 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the surface of the sun. Gamera's fireballs can burn through practically anything. And when he's not spitting hot fire, he fucking eats it! It's true, a fiery four-course meal can quickly heal and re-energize him. Naturally, as a giant turtle monster, he can retract his limbs and head into his shell for extra defense. And then fire rocket jets out of the holes and frickin' fly! What the fuck is this?! And why can't my turtle do that? Someday, Mr. Snappy. Someday. Gamera can fly at speeds breaching Mach 3, over 2,200 miles per hour. That's faster than the world record holding SR-71 Blackbird. But how the hell does he know where he's going? And more importantly, how does he not puke his guts out? The Atlanteans built Gamera using mana, an ethereal energy force connecting all things, places, and people. Everything has a finite pool of mana, which can be measured using a Sega Dreamcast. Ah, <sighs> but it still can't play DVDs. A person's mana is dependent on how much influence and authority they possess over others. As Gamera literally holds the world's fate in his claws, his mana levels are off the charts. Gamera can manipulate his mana in combat, which is useful when you've lost your arm and need to give your enemy a kaiju-sized falcon punch. Fuck yeah! And if Gamera ever runs low on mana, he can summon more from the Earth itself. I think he got him. Gamera is fast enough to catch a missile going Mach 10, capable of flying through outer space, and tough enough to survive a nuclear explosion which leveled the entire city of Sendai. As Sendai is about 152 miles across, this explosion must have yielded nearly 112 megatons of force. Gamera has a fierce will to fight. No matter how much pain he's in, he'll keep pushing forward for the win. And he's not just determined, he's actually quite brilliant. He tactically seeks to exploit enemy weaknesses, and is apparently smart enough to repair an alien spacecraft. He does machines. But despite his intelligence, he is not infallible. Gamera's supposedly impenetrable defenses have been pierced before. And remember, Gamera is explicitly the guardian of Earth, which does not necessarily include humanity. In fact, Gamera fears mankind may one day become the Earth's greatest enemy. I knew he sounded too good to be true. He's a hippie turtle. And yet, Gamera has a strange fondness for children. 
Um, Gamera! Gamera! He will bring kids to his man, touch them like no other can. Please don't tell on Gamera! No, really. Actually, he's sacrificed his life to save children on multiple occasions, even used his ultimate self-destruct move all for the safety of innocent children. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle!
because Godzilla just made turtle soup. Gamera may have held the speed advantage, but Godzilla's sheer size and power won this bout. He's nine times heavier! Plus, while Gamera tanked a city-busting nuke and almost died, Godzilla tanked a similar explosion from a meteorite and didn't even flinch. Gamera's shell was once pierced by Virus, a physically weaker foe. There's no doubt Godzilla could overpower this giant turtle. Hell, he's strong enough to match goddamn Thor! And since Godzilla's atomic breath is composed of pure radiation, not fire, Gamera could not feed off of it. But most importantly, Gamera has a history of winning through retreating. He usually takes one round to analyze his foe, and another to win the day. On paper, this sounds like a smart idea. But unfortunately for Gamera, Godzilla don't play like that. Looks like Godzilla put Gamera through living... shell. The winner is Godzilla. Next time on Death Battle. Have an idea for a death battle? Let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, follow, and you'll gain my eternal love. And don't forget to click on the pretty pictures all around you so that you can watch more death battles. Battle, death battles, that's correct. Thank <laughs> you for watching. Shut up, Wiz.